Over the years of taking care of her grandmother, Lucy Maud Montgomery completes her first novel, which she entitles Anne of Green Gables. Now begins the grueling process of finding a publisher. As luck would have it, her grandmother's house is also the local post office. She was able to mail this manuscript out of her own kitchen and have it come back over and over again without anyone knowing. And it did come back often. Her persistence finally pays off in 1908, when the L.C. Page Company of Boston decides to gamble on a story about an adopted orphan struggling to find happiness and love in her new home. Anne was partly Lucy Maud Montgomery herself, partly made up, but she possessed that creative imagination and that wonderful humor. Her enormous charm always overrode whatever social faux pas she had made. So it's a story of how someone who is different is also valuable, valuable enough that she can cause the people around her to laugh. Anne of Green Gables strikes a deep chord with readers everywhere. 19,000 copies sell in the first five months, 14 printings in the next year alone. No less than Mark Twain hails Anne as the dearest and most moving and delightful child since the immortal Alice. Lucy Maud is awed by the tribute. Her publisher realizes he's found a gold mine. There's that moment when, as a neophyte, you are willing to do, say, give away anything. Yes, I don't care, don't even pay me. Just, you know, just to see your work typeset is such a thrill that I can imagine that she made a number of concessions. Without realizing the implications, she signs over all rights, including film and translations. She also commits to writing a series of Anne sequels. Initially, Lucy Maud is charmed by her publisher, who wines and dines her in Boston. Once she gets back to Prince Edward Island, we're just back to sort of grandmother won't let me have more than one cup of oil for the oil lamp. In true Presbyterian fashion, the money would come in and she would set it aside and never look at it. I've never fully been able to understand why she didn't seize her newfound economic independence and change her life, but she didn't. For whatever reason, she couldn't do it. Despite her overnight fame and success, her journals begin to reveal an inner darkness that will haunt her all her life. She knew there was something wrong. She doesn't just say, I feel sad, I feel bored, I feel anxiety. She says, I am feeling depressed. 